If you've played Stalker, you've probably wondered what even is causing anomalies and other inexplicable phenomenons that define the zone. And if you've completed Shadow of Chernobyl the right way, you probably remember that behind these questions lay a mysterious field known as the Noosphere. Unfortunately, the details on what exactly is the Noosphere and how it influences the zone are never really explained. Hello stalkers and welcome to the Anomalous Dugout. In this video, we will try to answer these questions using some theories. While the concept of Noosphere does exist in real life, we will not be focusing on that, but rather only on what the Noosphere is in the world of Stalker. If you're interested in more information about the real scientific and philosophical concepts of the Noosphere, I suggest you check out Into the Zone's video on the matter. The link will be in the description. Anyway, quick disclaimer before we start. I am not a scientist, nor an expert in any of the fields that will be discussed. And the following is only my theory and my opinion. So if I made a mistake, or if you have other ideas of your own, make sure to write all of that in the comments below. That being said, let's begin. Information is at first glance quite an unmaterial concept. But in fact, information seems to always be stored in a physical way. Whether it is computer data inside hard drives, knowledge written in books, or genetic information inside the DNA of living species, information always takes a physical form. From this observation, we can imagine that all the information that our brain processes, like thoughts, ideas, and memories, are stored in a physical way as well. And while a part of these probably remain in the brain itself, what if such information was also compiled onto another physical support? That is where the idea of the noosphere comes in. In the words of the Sea Consciousness representative, Earth is surrounded by a special informational field, the so-called noosphere. It includes all the inhabitants of the planet with cognitive abilities. My interpretation of this is that the noosphere is a physical field which contains the thoughts, ideas, memories, and other cognitive information from all the living creatures who are able to create such information. This includes humans, of course, but it is also possible that animals take part in the noosphere as well. I'm not totally sure. In any case, if the noosphere is in fact a physical field, modifying it would require energy, since energy is the measurement of any physical transformation. Therefore, I believe that when a person has a thought, a tiny fraction of the energy used by the brain to function is transferred to the noosphere in order to add the newly created thought into the field. Apart from storing their cognitive information in the noosphere, a process that is completely natural and automatic, people can't really interact with the field. That is why the Sea Consciousness representative explained that individuals are unable to affect the noosphere. However, it could be possible for certain people to read into the noosphere. In other words, to take a look at the information that is stored there, at least to a certain extent. This would explain the abilities or gifts such as being able to see into someone's past. Of course, you can choose to believe or not that such abilities exist in the real world, and that's another subject on its own. Regardless, the main idea here is that all the thoughts on the planet are added to the noosphere, each time consuming a small amount of energy that is directly taken from the bodies of the inhabitants who think. 
At least that's how the noosphere is supposed to work in my theory. However, as we know, the noosphere was disturbed by scientists, which caused the appearance of the zone. I won't enter into the details of what happened, because it is not the subject of this video. But basically, the scientists connected the minds of multiple people in order to create the common consciousness, a super-consciousness that would be able to modify the noosphere. With this sea consciousness, they attempted to remove negative emotions from the noosphere, such as anger, greed and cruelty, in order to make humanity better. This suggests that the noosphere also stores emotions, or perhaps that the elements contained in the field have an influence on our minds. For example, negative thoughts stored in the noosphere will cause humans to have more negative thoughts again. Therefore, removing all of these thoughts from the noosphere would lead to no more negative thoughts being created by our brains in the first place. In any case, the experiment failed, and the sea consciousness was not able to achieve this goal. They did damage the noosphere, however, an event that resulted in the creation of the zone. According to the representative, Attempts to affect the noosphere brought about a local crack. The zone is simply the visible manifestation of this crack. So, it appears that a crack, or a rift, was created in the noosphere. In my opinion, this rift is responsible for the emissions, which are themselves responsible for the creation of anomalies, and so, artifacts. Here's my theory on what's happening here. Because of the crack, a portion of the energy, which is normally used to add new pieces of information to the noosphere, is leaking. This energy flows back onto the Earth in the form of emissions, and has to be dissipated some way or another. For reasons that I can't really explain, the best way that nature found to dissipate this energy is in the shape of anomalies. Most likely, the different types of anomalies are physically the easiest and most convenient way to use this excess of energy, depending on the surrounding conditions. For example, old electrical devices and machines are a perfect way to discharge the energy in the form of electricity. And that is why electroanomalies have more chances of spawning near transformers and power lines. The same idea also applies to other kinds of anomalies. Fruit punches appear near chemical substances and reactions. Burners form in hot and flammable environments, etc. It is also possible that the energy flowing out is used to continue to power other processes and devices that were already started, such as fires and lights. This could explain why fireplaces appear to burn forever, and why many electric lights remain operational after all these years, despite being located in abandoned areas. So, to summarize, people think and transfer their thoughts to the noosphere with a little bit of their energy. However, a part of this energy escapes through a rift that was pierced in the noosphere, and this energy flows onto the zone via emissions, powering the phenomenons known as anomalies. So, technically, if that's true, you could say that anomalies are powered by people. While this explanation does manage to quickly grasp the mechanisms behind the zone, it should be noted that the underlying problem is far greater than you can imagine. Indeed, if a part of the energy which is normally used to shape the noosphere is lost and used for creating anomalies instead, then it means that many pieces of information cannot reach the noosphere. 
Even worse, it could also mean that all the information that was stored in the noosphere disappears as the field changes due to a loss of energy. We can only speculate about what the effects of such changes on the noosphere would be. But if it is true that this field has an influence on the minds of humanity, then it is clear that such a situation will have consequences. What kind of consequences? It's hard to tell. But perhaps we will discover some of the effects in the upcoming Stalker 2. Well, that was it for my main theory about the noosphere in the world of Stalker. Don't forget to tell me what you think about all of this in the comments. I'll make sure to read and answer all of them. Thank you very much for watching, Stalker. And goodbye.